Hello. Ivan West, how's it going? Uh, let me just mute Twitter because I forgot to do that. Do that so I don't get notification noises. Yeah, I'm back. I've taken two days off before, but these these were miserable because I couldn't play fiddle for most of it. Of course, the Beacon Hill jig. Gosh, I've got so much energy today. It's great. Just want to fiddle all the time. All the time, fiddle.
Farewell to Whiskey, uh, Dick Alley Watch, and uh, Made Behind the Bar. Uh, it's good to be back, but I do also need to remember to take it slightly easy today so I don't exacerbate uh, my tendons. Uh, if you hadn't been following me on Twitter, I took a couple of days off because this tendon in particular was giving me a bunch of trouble. Uh, and it's mostly feeling better, but I don't want to make it a bunch worse. So... I might end up spending some more time taking slightly longer breaks between pieces, chatting a bit. Uh, I might make some tea in a moment, because uh, it is a bit later in the day, and I could use some extra caffeine, as well as some additional water, which tea is, tea is good for both of those things. How are you all? Yes, self-care is important, though in this case, this is more just sort of regular care, um, in that not injuring yourself is a thing that humans are, should generally be in favor of. <laughs> I guess it is technically self-care in that I'm taking care of myself, but this is not the sort of usual emotional self-care that um, comes with that uh, territory. This is more the just... I would really like to not injure myself, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, having having a I mean having a a few days off is pretty good. Um I should try and figure out ways to uh incorporate more of that um because it gives me a bit of time to uh th I mean the stream is definitely fairly intensive. So having a few days where I'm not pushing quite so hard on my muscles is good. 
uh, and can spread like some of my playing out more a bit. Uh, can spend a bit more time composing. I did write a new piece yesterday, which is a lot of fun uh, about my friend's friend Eamon Soup. Uh, Eamon stops by and chat occasionally, which is fun. Uh, and having some time off also lets me uh, listen to music, which is good because I trawled through some Celtic albums looking for good pieces to play, and I have a I have a bit of a list <laughs> of new pieces I want to learn, as well as, as at least one that I one from my brain archives that I remembered about that I need to relearn the second part to. Yeah, let's play another piece that I'll make some tea, and then you know we'll hang out and chat and. Just take it easy today. Sunday fiddling. Oh, I also put some lights up in the background, which is kind of fun. Um, still experimenting with that. Uh, my parents just had them hanging out in their garage and weren't using them, so stuck them up there. There's a, a a larger amount of lights over top of the the prints there, um, which if I put them all the lights on camera, it doesn't look great. Because you can see, like, even that's just, like, a really thin string of tiny LEDs. And it's already blowing out a bunch. Yeah, yeah, I took your suggestion and moved them up to the top. So that still lets a bunch of light into the room so I can see things better. Like music, for example. Um, but doesn't completely blow out the screen. And also I adjusted the colors uh, from that, that test shot. Also, hi, Mama. How's it going? I've also started to try and reorganize some of my bookshelves. Um, I need to figure out exactly how much of my shelves are in shot and put interesting things there. I think I need to relegate a number of the things that are on uh, these shelves to go live in my um, entryway hall shelving unit. My apartment's got such a weird layout. It's got an entryway hall which is just sort of dead space in the middle of it.
course, Waltzing Matilda. Gosh, I like that version of it. Every now and then I'm like, yeah, I'm okay at this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, now we're only already 20 minutes in. I'm just going to make some tea. Uh, breaks are important. I guess I'll run an ad break because I need to boil some water anyways. But uh, I'll be back in a few minutes uh, with some tea.
Hi, Molly. You got me just in time to come back from making some tea. Hello, friends. How is it going? I was very, very much enjoying your stream earlier. <laughs> Actual California gold. Yeah, that's about the, the time that I, I tagged out. I, I saw the archaeology stuff. I'm definitely going to spend some time talking about archaeology, I think, in the stream to... Oh, wow. Literal gold bars. Amazing. All right, I'm going to play a tune, and I'm going to talk about archaeology and stuff, because, as I mentioned, my dad was an archaeologist, and kind of a famous one, too. <laughs> Stay tuned. a piece called Cairo's Fur, which I wrote uh, on Wednesday? Tuesday? Something like that. Uh, yeah. I've been calling it a polka because it feels like it's more in 2-4, but it might be real. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, my father, Tom Loy, archaeologist noted, um, I guess the, 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 the part to start with is that he is the only scientific reference used in Jurassic Park in the book. Uh, he's mentioned by name in that they talk about the Loy extraction method, uh, which is... So my dad was a, a molecular archaeologist, uh, and he came up with a technique for extracting blood from very old uh, very old fossils. A lot of his work focused on uh, identifying prehistoric tools uh, and their functions because if you can analyze something and be like, oh, this is uh, this has got blood residues on it. this is clearly a skinning knife or this has starch residues on it. this is much, this is definitely a like something for mashing grain or something like that. Uh, and then that was, uh, and then from there came up with a technique for actually extracting d DNA from uh, from tools in conjunction with a number of other people, as science is, science tends to do. Uh, and then that was used uh, as reference for uh, Jurassic Park, which was really cool. Uh, he also did a bunch of work on Utsi, the Iceman. I'm going to see if I can... I didn't prep for this super well, but I'm going to see if I can find a picture of my dad living the most Indiana Jones looks. Do I have an entire scene for this? Let me literally just Google 
Dr. Tom Loy. There he is. That's my dad. That's my dad. Uh, yeah, open image. Looking the most Indiana Jones. As as you were noting on your stream, there is very much a look for archaeologists, and it's Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've got a couple of fun things around my apartment, which I'll, I'll pull out. I think I'm going to play another piece, and then I'll, I'll go find some of the things hanging out in my apartment. Um, it is worth noting that part of the reason this has been on my mind is that this is around about the 15th anniversary of his death in 2005. Uh, I miss him very much. Uh, we don't have an exact date because of the, the nature of that, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to play a piece that I wrote yesterday called Amon Soup. Uh, Amon is... Oh, I should transition off of this view. Um, but yes, if you want to go into my giant spreadsheet, you can find uh, the sheet music for all of these. Um, I'm still using the sheet music because I haven't fully memorized the own piece, the, the piece that I wrote. Uh, Eamon hangs out in chat occasionally under the username Bakmagoji. He lives upstairs. He makes excellent soups and is starting a soup business. So I wrote a piece about it. That's Eamon Soup. Ooh, my tea is probably just about ready, so that's, yeah, perfect timing. Right, I need a place to put this tea bag. One second. Thank you. 
This is some sort of axe that is on my shelf. And it's old and rusted. And it wasn't my dad's stuff. I don't really know what the story is behind it, but I think this axe is super cool. <laughs> Uh, my dad did a bunch of, yeah, this, this thing is also just very dull. Um, my dad did a bunch of work on Utsi, the Iceman, uh, the frozen mummy they found in the Alp, the long, the, the oldest natural mummy we've ever, we've ever found. Uh, he identified a lot of the tools. Uh, yeah, axes, axes are neat. They stick around a bunch. Um. Yeah. Otsu is super neat. Uh, I I do want to get some tattoos at some point. Uh, specifically, I want to uh, recreate some of the, ta the tattoos that Otsu had. Because Otsu had a bunch of tattoos. 60-something, if I remember correctly. Uh, at various points around his body that they believe were medicinal in nature. Because they were all over joint areas and... Uh, Chinese acupuncture sites. Uh, so I definitely want to, at some point, get two lines across here, which were uh, some of the two of the sort of more prominent tattoos. Uh, a lot of the others were sort of in the lower back and behind the knees and on the calf and stuff like that. Little, just lines, straight lines in sets or little small uh, cross patterns stuff like that but I'd really like to get it done in a more traditional method and I don't know who to talk to about that or how that gets done so I haven't progressed very far on that plan mm T. Thank you. 
That is the Killarney Boys of Pleasure. Partner works exclusively with basket remains from sites around the Salish Sea, and they have a basket weave pattern tattoo. That sounds super cool. Uh, I know my uh, my dad uh, and my mom as well uh, have done a lot of uh, work with the the various First Nations uh, throughout BC uh, over over the years. And yeah, I have a I have a deep attachment to the to the local peoples. <laughs> Uh, I was born on Songhees land, <laughs> and my adopted brother is, uh, Squamish, so. Yeah. Ooh, I just remembered another thing I have in the apartment. One sec. Yeah. This is a uh, very heavy clay model of an early hominid um, that, again, was just in my dad's office. And no one, we don't really know where it came from or which hominid or anything like that. But this is what early hominids looked like. Uh, a lot of my dad's work did involve uh, early hominids. Uh, and tool tool use and stuff like that, uh, figuring out at one point what that sort of transition into early tool use, little little flint snapped tools and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't I don't know my early hominid uh, my early hominids well enough. Uh, let me just put this down somewhere. Uh, I know he did a bunch of work with a dig site in South Africa at a play, at a site called Sturkfontein, uh, where they uncovered a early hominid that they nicknamed Littlefoot uh, because they were going through the um, I think it was a I think it was a mine originally or something, uh, and they were just going through the boxes of stuff that they had in some office, and they just found an entire foot in the box that was probably about this big. Um, and I think it was early enough that, um, I can't remember if, if, if the early hominids, if their big toe sticks out, I think it's their big toe or their little toe. One of those two, um, sticks out dom like, uh, very predominantly. Uh, and they're like, well, if there's a foot, what, there must be the rest of the skeleton in there somewhere. Uh, and they just essentially wander around with the foot going, uh, does it stick into any of these bits of the wall? And eventually found the the entire skeleton and uh, excavated it. Let me see if I can find a, a picture. Foot Dirk Fontaine Caves. Uh, this scene. Yeah. An ostr uh, little foot is an ostrilop Australopithecus? Yeah, the big toe. See how it sticks out like that? And yeah, that was very cool. So my dad spent a bunch of time in South Africa and occasionally came back with CDs, which was a lot of fun. All right, more music. Oh, yeah, we did... Um, uh, as when me and my sister were very small, it was probably be around like, well, like 92, 94 sort of era. Um, we did a, a couple of very big road trips to various site locations. Uh, that's how I got to see a lot of Australia when I was a kid.
Oh, interesting. September 1987. So that would have been about just the time that we moved there, about three months after I was born. <laughs> Uh, so I don't, I don't know the exact, uh, date in 97 when we moved down. Um, but I was, I was born in late May, uh, and I know that we moved to Australia when I was about three months old. So that, that checks out. Um, no, it was, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. About three months old. Um, and we moved to Canberra, uh, and I believe both my parents were, uh, let's see. My dad was, I think, working at the ANU then, and my mom, August, moved in August, and um, my mom was working on her... Were, did you start the um, Anthropology Masters at that point? Uh, what's, the, what's the sort of timeline there? My mom, here in chat, can provide a lot of the details around that, because she uh, obviously remembers that period a lot better than I do. <laughs> Yeah, masters. Um, one thing I've actually been meaning to talk to you about, talk to you about, is I don't have a copy of your book, uh, and that bumps me out. I want a copy of your book at some point. My mom wrote a book called Bush Toys. It's about about various toys that Aboriginal Australians used. Crypto Alexi, thank you so much for uh, gifting Molly a, a tier two sub. That's that's really kind. Thank you so much. And Aedox, yes, my actual mother, uh, C. Johanna, uh, as you can see by the little VIP symbol. Um, and also just a big thanks to my mom in general for being super supportive of all of my music throughout the years and of being super supportive of this stream right now in particular.
That was Angeline the Baker, uh, Old Joe Clark, and Spootus Carey. Uh, Crypto Alexi, uh, is that a pickup on the bridge? No, this is a uh, practice mute um, because I have neighbors and uh, would like to keep this apartment, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it's basically just a big chunk of plastic, big chunk of rubber. Sits there, makes the violin considerably quieter. Costs like $5.00. Uh, everything I have, uh, all of the, the music that is coming out of the violin is being picked up by this microphone right here, uh, which I originally got just for, um, I got it, uh, sort of at the start of pandemic times, just so that I could have a good time hanging out online with people, um, and not have to wear a headset all the time, um, because my previous, uh, headset mic was tough on my ears, and my ears stick out, so... Um, but it has been pretty good for uh, picking up fiddle stuff. Uh, and at some point soon, uh, thanks again to my my, my very generous mother, uh, I'll be getting a much better uh, interface for my computer. And so I'll be plugging in directly with XLR. Uh, uh, I'll be plugging directly in with an XLR into like a, a nice interface. You need to know 100% what Celtic fiddling sounds like. Uh, I mean, that's, that's what I do.
That was uh, old, the old favorite, aka the Kilfany, along with half of the tunes out there, uh, and Out on the Water, which I was messing up the second half of. <laughs> and Paradoxical 1980, 1998, thank you very much for that follow. Friends, if you aren't already following this channel, do hit that follow button. I very much appreciate it. Also, thank you everybody for hanging out and letting me chat about my dad and play fiddle for you all. Yeah. He was equally at home walking a survey line in the red dust of northern Australia as he was enthusiastically lecturing on stark identification to an undergraduate audience, or sitting back with a cold beer, spinning tales of escape from helicopter crashes and bear attacks in frozen Canada. Yep, that's my dad. <laughs> Yes, Julie. <laughs> you sure? Because I just did. Eh. It's entirely possible I accidentally some words in there. Ooh, another thing I should get off the shelf. Terra Australis 30. Archaeological science under a microscope. Studies and residue in ancient DNA analysis in honor of Thomas H. Loy. This is a book they put out uh, uh, when my dad died. That is essentially a collection of uh, research in his field. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the list of publications at the, the front is very fun. Uh, here's that picture I was showing earlier, but in color. Yeah, uh, Dr. Gail Robinson was a, a longtime collaborator. Same with, uh, Richard Fuligar and a number of other names that I remember from my childhood. Uh... With uh, Gale, he worked on uh, undersea nanobes, which are really neat. Um, they are extremophiles that are technically, at the time, I don't know where the science has gone since because I haven't been keeping track of it. Um, but at the time, they were too small to uh, be considered alive because people thought they didn't have enough space for all of the necessary components for life. Uh, until my dad got DNA out of it. <laughs> uh, but they're, yeah, they're incredibly tiny, tiny, smaller than microbes, which are, had been previously thought to be the smallest things alive. Uh, there's some potential connection to a fossil from 90, not fossil, uh, meteorite from 96 that uh, has what looks to be remains of nanobes and it came here from mars so hey maybe life on mars i also remember my my dad had a laptop that he called obi-wan nanobi My dad also played the mandolin and the washtub bass, but mostly the mandolin. Uh, he had a, a uh, what's the word, uh, Dobro mandolin, which are pretty rare, um, that I believe was unfortunately stolen when they were uh, cleaning his house out. But one of the pieces I really remember him playing uh, out of the fake book a lot uh, was the Munster Buttermilk. Thank you. 
Munster Buttermilk, one of the two songs I know about Munster, uh, which is a place in Ireland from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, I have just like a stack of new tunes I want to play. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I would like to play... The Gallo Glass. Um, wait, which version was I looking at? 11, I think? Yeah, 11. Wait, no, different key. notification there wasn't wasn't sure it was blue switch hosting me with one viewer hi how's it going for some reason i don't 
that notification only shows up in my Streamlabs OBS thing, but not in my Stream Manager setup, which is why I have multiple... Oh god, I have four four different images of my face on my screen right now, just so I can keep my eyes on everything. Uh, yeah, losing journal access. I didn't even read that many journals and stuff through my degree, because it was more computer science... Uh, at least learning it at that level is not especially article focused, but even I felt that when, yeah. Sea shanty esque, probably. Uh, I mean, I know what I know. Drunken sailor, <laughs> the most sea shanty. Um. Cool, fun, hell yeah. Welcome to the Twitch family, I guess. Probably the most sea shanty thing I got in here. Uh, it's such a simple piece. Um, so it's mostly just a game of uh, what interesting variations can I think to throw on top of it. I'd be very excited to try that piece with a loop pedal if I ever get access to that. In my research, uh, it took me far too long because guitar nerds are... They are what they are. Um, it far, took me far too long to discover that there are just uh, vocal uh, vocal pedals that you don't need to worry about mixing voltage and preamps and whatnot. You can just plug XLR cables into. So maybe I'll maybe I'll look into those at some point.
was The Ghost uh, and by Glimmerlight, the letter which I wrote. Yeah, getting the... Yeah. Um, all right, time to catch up on chat. Uh, Adam Random Numbers here. Welcome. I hope you, en hope you enjoy your time here. Uh, Julie, you're making progress. <laughs> um... Yeah, violin practice. God, I, I had to take a a day and a bit, day and a half off. I almost made it to two days off because my index finger uh, tendon was bugging me, and it was the worst. Um, which is why I feel like I'm back, even though I only took, even though I've had two day breaks before. Um, but usually, when I'm not streaming, I'm still playing fiddle. Hmm. Yeah, I actually feel the um, the opposite blue switch sometimes in that I feel like I play towards the fingerboard a bit too much. Um, and definitely one of the things I've been working on is keeping my bow angle correct so I don't have a squeaky E string, though you'll definitely still hear that coming out because I haven't perfected that. Uh, there's definitely some, some technique that I'm still rebuilding. <laughs> though it's also possible it's just this E string that's not great. Should maybe look into like an ante, like a non squeaky E string, because I'm not doing something, I'm not doing anything particularly fancy with my strings, anyways, and I do play a lot of open E's. I don't know, that's a future Max problem. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, thanks everybody for hanging out and letting me chat it, chat about my dad. Um, that has been very good for making sure I don't overdo it. <laughs> I know that um, you can specifically get E strings that are designed in a way to reduce squeaking and they'll be branded as such. Um, but I also think there's just some amount of variation from string to string. But also a bunch of it is kind of my technique, so. Dunno. Yeah. Hmm. What should I play? Is any of these sets good? I should... Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beeswing Hornpipe and Mittens Breakdown. Yeah. Oh, there was a Yeah, there was a slow song I wanted to I wanted to learn or at least learn better because I played it played it through a bit yesterday when I finally broke down and let myself play fiddle. <laughs> uh this is known as Captain O'Kane, uh, or aka the Wounded Hussar.
That was the Wounded Hussar. I'm going to add a couple of these songs to my spreadsheet. Which is actually why I made this entire view for uh, music entry. So you can see what I'm doing. It also gives me a, an excuse to uh, stop playing for a little bit longer. I'm going to move these down further. And yeah, Molly, talk spreadsheets. <laughs> I love this spreadsheet. Uh, Wounded Hussar. John McDonald's real. Sure, yeah. If you got spreadsheet in particular, uh, I would, I would, I would definitely start with that. Though I, I'm, I'm sure I can find it on the session as well. is a waltz in G minor. Grab this. Yeah, waltz in G minor. Leave that for later. Make a Captain O'Keefe. O'Kane, of course. I feel like Captain O'Keefe is somebody else. And I also wanted to... So I got that in there. Yeah, that'll totally work. I will I will check my, my Twitter DMs. Uh, and then I wanted to add... This is the Galvo Glass. Setting 11. The jig here, it's setting 11. Got that and remembered. Close that. All right. Let's go back to my scene while I check my Twitter. All right. John McDonald. Neat. All right, hey, Docs. Thanks for hanging out. Very glad that all of you choose to spend time with me as much or as little as you wish all right i'm not seeing a twitter dm yet i'm going to double check the session as well because i have that queued up pretty well john mac donald Oh, of course, it's under message requests. Uh, accept. View. I have sheet music now. Ha-ha! Twitter is trying to hide it to me because... Uh, reasons, I guess.
That was a fun tune. I'm going to play that more. I wonder if this is about John A. McDonald or just a uh, John McDonald. <laughs> Because if it's about John A. McDonald, I'm probably going to have to put disclaimers on it before I, uh, before I talk about it. But <laughs> I don't know. It's not written by John McDonald, so. Yeah, that piece is nice. I like that a bunch. Mark that as complete. Yeah, sight reading. This is definitely something I spent a lot of time practicing. That was a, a big part of my classical education, especially the exam parts. Um, part of the exam would be having a short piece that they would provide to you during the exam that you would have to sight read your way through. Let's play Streets of Paradise. Yep, good old RCM. I mean, uh, Crypto Alexi, thank you for that follow. Hope you enjoy hanging out. I mean, the RCM, like, uh, yeah, it's Existential Dread, but also, like, it's a bunch of good skills. Uh, it's stuff that I, uh, I, that I use all the time, like being able to play, just have thirds at my fingertips all the time, being able to learn stuff by ear. Though a lot of the ear learning um, came from uh, learning fiddle music as well. And I got pretty far in it. I got to... Yeah, I, I, I do wish I remembered a bit more of the, the, the theory stuff. But I did do my... I did complete my grade 9 fiddle stuff. Or not fiddle. Uh, Royal Conservatory Violin grade 9. Which is pretty high up there. Because I think it only goes to grade 10. Yeah, yeah, Julie. I I did study some uh, grade ten stuff as well, but yeah, diff didn't end up taking that exam. Part of that was just that was that was grade twelve of high school for me, and I was, oh my god, I was doing so much music. <laughs> it wasn't even so much the music load that was the problem. It was the the music load, um, the the huge amount of context shifts as well. Um, cause I was doing so many different things and then also doing grade 12 of school and worrying about provincials and stuff like that off on top of it. Uh, now I can play as much as I want and I still feel like I'm not doing very much. Thank you. 
that piece is pretty close to memorized, so I'll probably, if, some, if I remember, I will check in on it later on in the stream to start reinforcing that memorization. What was the other one that I wanted to play? The one that was right next to it, the log cabin. No. Um, yes, the log cabin is right next to it. And Yokei, I want to play that too. Gosh, I just want to play so many fiddle pieces. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, sugar shot. Um, yeah, there's memorizing stuff is the, the key to it is being able to play it uh, first go around, having it being memorized. Because uh, it's super easy to have memorized it the 20th time in a row you've played it. <laughs> so it's sort of like pop quizzes are a very good, very good way of uh, memorizing stuff. And yeah, Eamon, uh, I was playing earlier. I wrote a suit. I wrote a song about your soups. It's called Eamon Soup. <laughs> I'm going to play it again, because now Eamon's here to hear it, and uh, he hasn't heard it yet. <laughs> Soup King Eamon. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. All right, Blue Switch, thanks for hanging out. Uh, good luck figuring out OBS. Uh, thanks for sharing that piece earlier. Uh, yeah, this this piece has sort of been slowly building it in my mind. Um, you, most of the way I'm sort of writing the pieces these days is I improvise for a while until I find an interesting idea, uh, and then I figure out a name for it later. Uh, and that's where a lot of this came from. And then after I wrote it, I realized, oh, this is actually that piece I was thinking about writing. And I guess I'd just been sort of simmering in the back. Uh, yeah, it's it's the first two parts, uh, I guess, are, yeah, like soup. Yeah, yeah, get it? <laughs> um, the, the idea is sort of the, the first two parts are about preparing it, and then the, the third part is about eating it. The second part especially is more sort of like chopping chopping veggies I mean that's sort of the general idea I don't know the music's loose you can describe sort of whatever meaning you have you want to it but I don't know it's a song about your soup <laughs> it's aim and soup Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely part of it. That just you just have to sit back and go, ah, yeah. <laughs> Log Cabin, uh, which I'm still working on learning. It's a good piece, and I like it. <laughs> In Final Fantasy XIV, there is a landmark called Byron's Bread, a little farmstead, and I've theorized that Byron made such red bread that they had to put her on the map for posterity. Yeah. Is there anything at that landmark of Byron's Bread? Just the just a tiny little farmstead. Couple of dude in a shed. And some crops. Is bread maybe a metaphor for like hard alcohol or something? Beer, maybe? It's on the map. <laughs>
in-game map that had a location with nothing at it. That'd be... Eventually, you'd have, you'd have to put something there. Just put, put it there and then just, like, wait for half a year and then eventually put something there. All right. We're just about at the two-hour mark. I'm going to take... Uh, that's what's happening with Gilneas and WoW. Wow. I've had a weird desire to play WoW lately. I don't know why. I probably won't, though. Um, I'm going to take a quick break uh, to rest my muscles because we're at the two-hour mark. And it's been an hour and a half since I took a break. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to ruin my hand. And I did. And it was werewolves. Surprise werewolves. That's great. <laughs> uh, ooh. All right, break time. I'll be back in a few minutes. Um, breaks are important uh, for me to be able to play as long as I do. The stream is an endurance test. Um, and I'm like on the edge of if I play just way too much, I'm going to wreck my hand and that's bad. Uh, so I don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna not play fiddle for a few minutes. I'm gonna stand up and stretch. Uh, I suggest you also stand up uh, or sit down or do something to take care of yourself. Uh, I'm also gonna run a quick ad break so that people coming in don't have to deal with pre-roll ads, uh, such as when Molly's raid came in. I bet none of those people had to see pre-roll ads because I ran a 60-second ad break like three minutes before that. <laughs> so I'll be back in a few minutes. Do not go away. There will be more music after this break.
Hello. I'm back. Kilnius was a paper town. all had a good break. I've still got a bit of tea left, which is good. Ah, copyright trap. I see. Nice. Yeah, we got like actual city funded compost uh, stuff here, which is pretty neat. Not I never use because I'm bad. <laughs> I should I should probably use that. Uh let's play some pieces I'm more familiar with. The Nine Points of Roguery. Nice little piece. Ugh. I need I have a bunch of a bunch of recyclable cans of various sorts that I, I should really turn in for deposits. But also I'm lazy, and maybe I should just find a friend that wants to take turn them in, and then they can have the profits. <laughs> Eamon, you want a bunch of empties? And like two dollars? <laughs> Thank you. 
That was The Mouth of the Tobik and Old French, a couple of good French-Canadian pieces. Yeah, Erica, I definitely, I've done that occasionally, where I, um, though I though I usually try and bag them up separately and leave them, like, next to the, the bins. Uh, it doesn't work quite so well down here, because there's not a, there's, I mean, there's not a lot of homeless people wandering through the recycling area, but I definitely did that, um... Or I guess we did that uh, several times at various desert buses where we'd generate just bags and bags of cans over the course of the week. Uh, and we, as, as site volunteers, would take out the trash, which would go into the dumpster, and we'd take out the bag of recyclables, which would go next to the dumpster, uh, and then nature would take its course, I guess. <laughs> you almost have enough for a scale. <laughs> Sharp, you say. 
All right. All right. E flat major. Do you want major or minor? Here we go. D sharp scale, aka E flat. <laughs> it's not a good way of putting in uh, the flat character part of the, in the spreadsheet. I'll just show you um, in my giant spreadsheet. I just have a cell here that just has the flat character in it, so I can copy and paste that wherever I need it. <laughs> Before I forget, uh, the reason why I made it 800 is because there's eight notes in a scale. <laughs> Aha! Uh, I'm funny. <laughs>
that was uh, The King of the Fairies and Cottage in the Grove. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Been a good stream. I have, I very much enjoyed hanging out, talking about things, playing playing fiddle music, learning new fiddle pieces. Speaking of which, I have this giant pile of new fiddle pieces I should learn. Uh, which one is this one? Uh, the Melik team. Try the first setting on this. <laughs> yeah, man. I had to take like the last two days off because my index finger tendon has been giving me a bunch of trouble. And my god, it was the worst. Not playing fiddle sucks. Don't recommend. That's a Melik Tam. The Melik Team. Melik Team? Melik Team. Uh, AKA Ed Kelly's. Um, that's setting one. Are there other settings I want to try? Yes, there are. Longer settings. stuff but the uh, first section of it doesn't make as much sense to my brain oh this one isn't even this setting isn't even possible on my instrument neat uh, that is definitely a, a five string violin setup I guess it's got a let me show you um, this note here 
It's lower than my instrument can go. <laughs> don't don't think I can play this version. different yeah how many different settings are there on this page 18 different settings for this piece it's a lot of that's a lot of choice like that I think I like the first version the best need to talk more because I can I can feel my tendons and I don't want to feel my tendons <laughs> gotta 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 keep this stuff paced is there anything y'all want to y'all want to know about y'all want to chat about what y'all up to uh, that's the last of my tea dinger maybe I'll maybe I'll make another teapot yeah silverware tendons don't don't want that doing animal crossing chores that sounds relaxing sister-in-law put up her christmas lights today i hate that woof <laughs> one one entire month of Christmas is already a lot. Uh, I am drinking a 
a green tea of some sort. Let me go grab the box so I can actually read it off. Uh, or I, no, it actually it says on the the, the, the tea bag. It's an organic hocha green tea by Mighty Leaf. It's got this giant, giant bag, which is great. Um, I'm not a particularly discerning tree drinker, but I do like a good green tea. Um, yeah, Sumo Cup. Very good for green tea. Um, I should probably get like a Sleepy Time tea or something like that as well. Because uh, sometimes I feel like I need an extra pot of tea, but the extra caffeine is maybe a bit much. But I often find that uh, a pot of tea is a very good touch-up for after my coffee, uh, in a way that a second cup of coffee would be way too much. My oh, gosh, is caffeine important to me? Not just emotionally, but very physically, <laughs> in that I get headaches if I don't have enough caffeine. Yeah, chamomile, eh? Maybe I'll get a box of that. Yeah, I think I think fiddling has also very much increased my my tea my tea intake because uh, it's put me on a it's it's got me a, like a regular schedule of like I should take a break at this point and it's always nice to have some tea to force me into taking a break and t and keeping me hydrated. Hojichak.co. Yeah, beers are pretty good tea. You can get tea beers. What am I thinking about? There was like a... There was like an Earl Grey beer, isn't there? Something like that? Hmm. Oh yeah, it was a Collective Arts. Uh, yes, I'm of legal drinking age. Uh, oh, that is very sad. It was a pretty sad Halloween. Uh, in terms of wandering around outside. I mean, I guess not a lot of people wanting to put effort into decorating their house if they're not having trick-or-treaters. I am a big fan of beer. I don't have any beer in the house right now, but that's fine. Actually, you know what I'll do? The one bottle of something I do have is uh, the Spitfire Ginger Ale that Phillips make, makes, which is really good. And I still remember back when they called it the Spark Mouth. Um, I'm going to crack one of these open. Well, I only have the one, so I'll crack my remaining one open. You can just get them at Thrifty's, which is great. Yeah, it's a very gingery ginger ale, which I like. Yeah, all right, all right, let's... Uh, that's some good chats. Let's do another piece. Let's do some more fiddle. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, well, I will definitely take a look at... That green tea thing, Chrono. Oh yeah, stretching hands. Um, so my my left hand is distorted. I have this amount of splay on this hand. And let's see if I can do this properly. In shot. Eh. I have about an inch more splay on my left hand than my right. And I'm right-handed. <laughs> It is very much a, a learned thing. Yay. 
Yeah, it's a lot of like doing this sort of stretching. Awesome, Maimon. Thanks for stopping by. It's so good to see you. Lurk, lurk, lurk. I should add a lurk command. is the musical priest and scotch mary oh you're looking at spreadsheets and databases yeah spreadsheets i actually really like spreadsheets drum ultima a thank you very much for that follow <laughs> prizes don't mind themselves got your prize mining pick yeah 
I hope you enjoy your time here, Drum Ultima. Oh, it's just Drum Ultima with the A capitalized. It's not Drum Ultima. Got it. I can read. <laughs> the ultimate drum machine. Yeah. I mean, uh, you can change that. <laughs> Twitch does let you change your name every six months, I think. And I think there's even a setting for how the capitalization should appear in chat. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Being afraid of changes is, is a real fear. Uh, the only change I'm not afraid of is changing key. Ah, music jokes. I'm also not afraid of small changes. That's how musicians get paid a lot of the time. <laughs> Shoutouts to the several summers I spent busking in Victoria. I think I've changed my screen name three times on Twitch, but it's been many years since then, since the last one, and I don't think I'm planning on changing it further. I like shark fists.
I like your username, Erica. But also, I have a very strong tendency of calling people by their human, their outdoor human names. Uh, just it's, it's a bad, it's a hard habit to break sometimes. <laughs> Normie Sona. Oh wow, that's that's got some powerful energy to it. <laughs> uh, my original username was Morak, M-O-R-A-C, which I came up at random with when uh, generating, when making a character name in, oh god, what was it, Age of Wonder, I want to say, um, and I used that for a very long time uh, until I was a year or two into university, no, it was first year university, so probably around 2005, Uh Uh, so in 2005, there was a restaurant brand called Morak that was like a Moroccan fusion restaurant, and that just ruined any searchability I had. Uh, and then I tried a number of sort of variations and options, and none of which were really great and still sort of haunt me on various accounts. <laughs> um, but and eventually started on settled on shark fists, which is just good and evocative and people remember it. And the only downside is people keep quoting baby shark at me and then I want to stab them. Yeah, for me, it's uh, Casey, I guess. I'll call you Casey here while I remember it. Mostly it's that there's a bunch of people in here who I've uh, met uh, or who are good friends or are my literal mother. Um, <laughs> so it's just me me knowing people. Yep. Yep. Uh, there was a... Uh, I found out that there is a game that WizKids is making... Uh, that has a shark fist in it. Uh, which I'm assuming is a is a reference to me. Uh, let's go to that view. Music entry, yeah. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. It's not a super high quality shot, but. Eh. Whoop. That zoomed in too far. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, I have to different Mama, I have to differentiate from my little mama from other people in my chat called Mama. <laughs> so there's the there's this shark fist. Um so maybe it's a reference to me? Probably not. The thing that is a reference to me, okay, this this can stop now, um, is Shark Kid from uh... <laughs> Oh no, the moms are gonna talk. Uh Shark Kid from Eichenfell is also literally me. That one's actually literally me. Let's see if I can find a screenshot. They're a, they're a kid in, in Eichenfell, and they're very excited about sharks. Uh, this might take a second for me to find, but that's okay because I need to keep talking and not play quite so much so I don't hurt my hand. Uh, da, 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 da. How do I resize this window? Can I resize this window? Okay, fine, be that way. Manage my three screenshots. Show on disk. Thank you. Go back to this screen. Stop. Step. There we go. This is a character in Iconfell. Iconfell's great. You should all play Iconfell. 
Uh, they're named Maxim, and they're yep, it me. They're looking for sharks. Sharks are attracted to music. <laughs> Yeah, Eichenfeld's a really good game. This 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 came about because I um when it was on Kickstarter. Uh I had I was employed at a job that paid me decent money. Uh not amazing money, but decent. Uh and I was able to back the Kickstarter a very high high tier. And also Chevy's a uh Chevy's a good friend. Nope, don't need to I'm just gonna ruin everything. And I've also really been enjoying uh, hanging out and chatting with uh, Joanna Blackheart on Twitter, who is one of the writers. They're great. National Graphic, National Geographic, 2018, Sharks, Jazz Music, Food, Animals. Ah uh, yes, I did. I did actually look up, look, look this up. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's there's some science to it, sort of, a little, I guess. Let's come back. All right, let's actually play some fiddle because this is a fiddle stream. <laughs> that funky music shark boy <laughs> uh what was the piece I was wondering? ah yes um wait no where to go my own bussing song there it is shower's empty when you forget your own song halfway through. Uh, that was Showers of Empty, which I wrote a couple of weeks ago. It's called as such because uh, I came up with the core melody while I was in the shower, and I really wanted a word that started with E in the, in the title. So... <laughs> uh... 
Ah, what's another piece that I should play? Uh, let's play Farewell to Chernobyl. I should practice this piece some more. Scientists are dweebs? Yeah, scientists are dweebs. I think anybody worth hanging out, hanging out with is a dweeb. better but yeah that's uh that's showers of or farewell to chernobyl which i i always think about uh alex stacy when i play that piece because alex is very into uh the history and culture of uh the chernobyl explosion or explosion meltdown meltdown didn't really explode uh neat we are now into we're officially into bonus time because uh, we've hit the three-hour mark. Bonus time means uh, I will keep going as long as I feel comfortable, but I'm allowed to stop whenever I want. Um, but I'm actually feeling pretty good because I've been pretty good about just hanging out and talking today, um, which, which I will hopefully try and maintain uh, over future streams, though it can definitely be very tough when there's like three people in chat. <laughs> So, I don't know. Thank, thanks, everybody, for hanging out and sticking with me and chatting and enjoying this music. Yeah. Music. It's good. Um, what other things should I mention? Uh, if you're not already following me on Twitter, you can do that. Uh, I've been posting the sheet music to the compositions I write as I come up with them. 
uh, someone was very kind enough to post a video of them uh, playing one of my pieces recently, which really brightened up my day. <laughs> I think I'll play that one next, you know, in a few moments. Uh, it was uh, a day in the park. You just learned you have a $500 guitar. It's not bad for a guitar. <laughs> I actually have no idea how much my violin cost. I didn't really have a... See, I got a... When did I go up to a full-size violin? When I was probably like 14 or something, I guess? Yeah, excuse me. Her uncle's only acoustic. Yeah. That's a good way to get acquire instruments, is to have somebody else buy them uh, and then not play it and be like, hey, you want a, you want an instrument? 350 Yeah, that seems like a reasonable price for sort of the... A half decent Mando. I don't know how much my Mando cost because uh, I rescued my Mando uh, from some friends who one of them had decided they wanted to learn the mandolin and had bought a mandolin and then did that for a bit and then stopped. And uh, after a while, I was I went into their garage and saw the mandolin in one of those sort of big rubber garbage containers. And there wasn't anything in there. They weren't planning on throwing out, but they were just storing it that way. And I was like, you're... You're not allowed to have this mandolin anymore. So I took it away from them. And I bought it a case. No, I got somebody else to buy it a case for me for Christmas. I do miss my dad's uh, Dobra mandolin. Um, I wish there was some way we could get that back. But I assume it is gone forever at this point. You should do that, Pterodactyl. Playing music is fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was A Day in the Park, uh, one of my compositions, and Merrily Kiss the Quaker. And hurdy gurdies. For whatever reason, hurdy gurdies were just completely not on my radar until Sea of Thieves came out. And then, as since then, everybody's been talking about hurdy gurdies. I don't know why. Like, I don't think I even saw them at the various folk fests I went to as a kid. I haven't shown up in any of the, like, the Celtic fiddle bands that I've that I've uh, listened to. Just don't know. There's never any of, any of the sessions or anything like that. Medieval choral music? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I have so much mu I have so much music to listen to uh, already. Viral hurdy-gurdy. Making hurdy gurdy sound like a like a STI or something. Oh yeah, I caught hurdy gurdy off that guy I met last week. One of the other things that's been uh, bringing me joy lately has been this. Uh, yeah, yeah, you get your hurdy gurdy cream. Um, where did I put it? Ah, yes. Here we go. The 1811 Dictionary of Vulgar Terms and Phrases has been really amusing me lately. And there's definitely a couple of a couple of terms in here about uh, things you caught off of various wenches. See if I can find a good example. I mean, to have hurdy gurdy in here as one of the one of the words. Word of the day. Let's let's pick a word of the day. Um, let's see. Hulver headed, having a hard, impenetrable head. Hulver in the Norfolk dialect signifying holly, a hard and solid wood. Uh, I will m check out that link later, Chrono, just because I don't want to get muted. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, hug. To hug Brown Bess, to carry a firelock or serve as a private soldier. He hugs it as the devil hugs a witch. Instead of one who holds anything as if he was afraid of losing it. There's a lot of uh, can't terms in here as well, which is really interesting. Because there, can't is a such an interesting phenomenon. There's like an alternate alternate usage for words that are designed to be slightly impenetrable to somebody who knows the base language. Yeah, I caught a bit of it. Uh, I was watching yesterday, for sure. Um, yeah, Thieves' Cant is definitely a, a staple of Dungeons & Dragons as well, uh, in the Rogue class. Um, but it's 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 also, Cant in general is definitely a real thing. Um, what's an example in here? Uh, to hop the twig is Cant for to run away. Uh, let's see, where's another one? High pad is a highwayman. Uh, hick, oh no, that's a, that, that's interesting. What, what's, um, what's really interesting about this is seeing which, uh, 
is is find is occasionally finding words that are still in use as slang, uh, or words that have converted from slang into just the word for the thing. Um, hearing cheats for ears, hash to flash the hash to vomit is can't. Um, Harmon is a constable. Yeah, I don't know about the stereotypical gay accent history. I've never actually looked into that. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I just haven't looked into it at all. After the Battle of Ogrim, which I'm glad how that memorization went. Hmm. Speaking of memorization, let's do a quick run through of a little bolero, see if that one's sticking. And then I wanted to go back to the streets of Paris to see if that memorization is sticking.
That's Lillibularo. You're looking up now, and it appears to be a very spicy area in sociolinguistics and is not particularly strongly researched. That checks out. <laughs> Where did a stereotype come from? Hmm. Hmm. Turns out everybody who came up with that stereotype was slightly racist and or homophobic, or whatever the particular stereotype happens to be. It maybe isn't a trusted source. Yep. Yep. Alright. What was I doing? Uh, Streets of Paradise. Not as memorized as it was earlier. <laughs> nice, Erica. Relax time. Uh, yeah. Welcome back, Aedox Arbosa. And yeah, no worries about uh, maybe having used the wrong pronoun because I I don't remember you doing that. Um, though if it was during Molly's stream, I was sort of in and out. So <laughs> see how it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, messing up pronouns is, is definitely something that, that just happens. Uh, it's something I've had, even, even I've had, uh, an adjustment period, uh, and your brain, uh, can take some getting used to rewiring some stuff if you're not used to using they, them pronouns, pronouns for people. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, I'm I'm generally not particularly miffed at all if somebody uh messes up my pronouns by accident. Uh I'm more worried about or I'm more interested in you getting it right the next time rather than you apologizing for this time. Uh the stuff that uh I only really care about is if somebody's acting in bad faith. Um and refusing to use the correct pronouns, that's that's something I take issue with. But if you mess up and once and get it right the next time, that's that's just how it how it is sometimes. And I Yeah. Oh yeah, we put those ones into the sea. But there's there's been a couple of instances where people have uh have messed up my pronouns once and have given me like effusive po apologies. I'm like, no, it's it's fine. You you already feel worse about this than I do. <laughs> um, child is the um the gender neutral term. There's gender neutral terms for most things. Um, there's a couple. Uh, there's a couple of spaces where there aren't, or we haven't come up with uh useful. Uh, non-gendered uh, there isn't a good uh, a, the the, the non-gendered aunt uncle that I've seen is uncle a u um, though I don't particularly like that one I'm not a huge fan of the ones that just mash together the two terms um, I'm also pretty medium on uh, mix as a hot as an honorific because it seems a bit too on the nose. <laughs> And isn't also the way everybody uh, relates to the their their relationship with gender. Um, 
Yeah. It's it's definitely more noticeable when you say it out loud. Like I I think it's a really good solution for writing it out, but for saying it, it really doesn't quite do it for me. All non-binary folks get PhDs? Yeah, sign me up. Um Yeah, and we still we also don't have a uh a gender neutral sir or ma'am equivalent. Though you could you could just switch to captain, I guess. Yeah, everyone's a doctor. <laughs> You're all doctors now. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've definitely thought about, like, there's been a non-zero amount of time where I've, I've thought about, like, oh, what if I just, you know, got a PhD so that someone could call, people could call me doctor instead of mister or whatever. <laughs> but also partially because my dad, my dad had his PhD and being a doctor lawyer sounds, sounds pretty good. That's just me noodling around. Uh... Ooh, I haven't played Mississippi Hornpipe in a bit. Do I have a favorite piece? Not really. Um... It's really hard to pick a favorite. It's, I think my favorite piece is whatever I happen to be playing. <laughs> I did play Waltzing Matilda earlier, but I played it, like, very earlier, so I'm more than happy to play Waltzing Matilda again, because that piece is great. Thank you. 
Waltzing Matilda. Which I realized today uh, could probably qualify as a Halloween piece because it's got a ghost at the end. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be right back. I'm not going to take a full break. Um, I just need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'll be back in a few minutes, probably less than. I'm back. I am full of less fluids. Babies are... Babies can be very grumpy. It did occur to me when... Um, watching the most recent Mandalorian episode... That uh, my friend's kid is definitely way cuter than the child... Thomas is a cute baby. Yeah, Thomas V. Mudhorn is not a fight I want to see. You can do this. Thank you. 
that was Kitty Layover and Keegan's Jig. I think. Or maybe it was a different jig. I don't know. There's a lot of jigs out there. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, one of the things I wanted to do today was look at a piece that I definitely remember, but can't quite remember the second half of. Setting six of John Ryan's Polka. <laughs> uh, okay, Jack Ryan's Polka. Okay, the Hills of Connemara. The 40 pound float. 40 pound float, but misspelled. Um, Ryan's, Sean Ryan's. Yeah. Let's add that to the songbook. John Ryan's. Uh, who's the... There's that... Um, popular Amazon show with someone named Ryan in it that's an action thingy. Jack Ryan? Jimmy Ryan's? I don't know. Jack Ryan, yeah. I hope that he's the guy that wrote this polka. Hmm. Uh, now I can close that tab. Oh, right. I need to catch up on uh, my YouTube. Yeah, I get it. Jack of all trades. Uh, I need to catch up on my YouTube VOD archive, but Twitch still hasn't unmuted that one stream, um, which is a bummer. It's not even the entire stream. It's just like a couple of minutes out of it, but I, it's just killed all, all the energy of... Because I don't want to upload a VOD that's got muted bits in it but I guess I'll have to and I don't want to upload VODs out of order 
Or maybe I just skip that one and upload it later if they eventually get around to it. I don't know. It's just such a bummer to have Twitch just not care that they have messed up my stuff and I'm disputing it and they're just like, nah, we're just not going to do anything about it. to memorize that piece before because that's that's definitely a far too fast of a jump to memorization That's the Washington Quick Step. Which I'm fairly certain I, I memorized that before. Um, it is a very familiar piece to me. Yeah, I don't think I can really like dub over it or something. That would just be super awkward. I do not. Part of the way I play is very inconsistent. Um, like you've seen the the sheet music I look at that is that does that sheet music does not contain all of the stuff that I put into a song um the sheet music I have is like a framework that I do a performance of so recreating any piece that I have exactly is very difficult um plus the the twitch muting chunk is fairly haphazard Argentum Flare, thank you for that follow. I hope you I hope you enjoy your time here. So yeah, I, can, I don't think I can really like patch that over or anything. I also don't think it's worth it. It's just it's just a real bummer that Twitch just is in flagrant violation of the own laws that they are attempting to get other people to follow, and I am powerless to do anything about it. On that note, here's more fiddling. <laughs>
That is uh, the chorus, uh, a.k.a. the Kilfinny. <laughs> oh, man. No amount of ginger beer, too. Ugh. That is a klezmer piece called Trembly Lanka. Moscow Mule Fed in Bars was the best thing for Gingerbread Friend. Yeah, that was a pretty good fed. Um, still quite active, I think, in Seattle, at least. Uh, I think there's a, a, a place downtown that I went to that they all they do is Moscow Mules. That's the entire establishment. It was pretty great. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Galloping Nag, uh, The Looting Banshee, and The Breaks of Kildare. Yeah. I went to a place in Seattle that was a hotel bar that had um, whiskey sours on tap, I think. Was it whiskey sours? No, it was Old Fashions. That was it. Seemed kind of weird to me, but okay. That was a that was a that was a weird PAX last last year. I guess it was twenty nineteen PAX. I mean, sugar in the tap like every soft drink ever. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how they prepared it. It was fine. Uh, my coworkers at the time talked very highly of it, so we walked for like half an hour to get there from the company dinner at the time, uh, which was a very oh god that that whole that whole weekend was just a mess. Yeah, I don't think they had a sugar cube in the glass. I think it was just like ice and a cherry and maybe a orange orange peel bit.
Hmm. I do like mixed drinks occasionally, though I tend to stick to stick to beer. <laughs> that is that's the that's the big thing about the the whole Moscow Mule craze is that like Seattle and Victoria and the entire Pacific Northwest has some of the best beer in the world, and it's hard to hard to say no to that. It's also, I find it a lot easier to manage how much I'm drinking with beer um, because there's a huge, because there's a large amount of volume with it. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's it's hard to accidentally drink too, too, too many drinks. <laughs> there's also like a fair amount of um, beer is like less dehydrating than mixed drinks, that sort of thing. Yeah, that sounds about right. Huntsman's Chorus and the Gallipede. An old Scottish ale. Nice. I think most of what I know about 
Like when you say Scottish ale, I mostly think of Scotch ales, which I believe are different. I'm very much a beer fan, not a beer expert. <laughs> Um, no, uh, whiskey and whiskey are just different spellings of the same thing. Um, there are minor variations based off of the natural way, the, um, the places that they're produced, but they're functional, like as from a functional perspective, they're the same thing. Um, uh, a scotch ale, I believe is something that would be aged in a whiskey barrel I think I'm not sure I actually fairly like I actually like hops I think they get a bit of a bad bad name um I think there's a lot of like medium IPAs out there for sure but I mean part of that is my my personal taste tends more towards bitter so it's it's been a good yeah. Scotch ale is aged, aged and coated in sausage, then breaded and fried. Yes, you've got it exactly. Um, you get in a can and um, you, you pull the top of the can off and you slide that out onto your plate. <laughs> Scotch ale is caramelized or has some flavor of added. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I mean, they're good. I just don't know what the difference between that and a, like an old Scottish ale is. Or if there is a difference. Maybe it's just the, the same thing. Alright. We're actually past the four hour mark. Um, which is pretty good. I don't feel like I've pushed myself. I think I've been very good about stopping and talking a bunch. Which has let me stream longer. Which is nice. Wiggins! Oh my gosh. The entire Wiggins raid... Oh, hello, friends. Hi. I'm going late day. How was your stream? Give a shout out to this this here Matt. Matt in the chat. Oh, right. You're on your big uh, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, not rewatch, I guess, but playthrough, replaythrough, regame. Gosh, Kingdom Hearts is such a weird franchise. Every time I think I'm getting close to understanding Kingdom Hearts, I think about Mickey Mouse in a trench coat and it just slips away again. But hello, chat. Uh, if you are, if you are not aware, uh, Matt Wiggins is an excellent streamer and internet funny person, and also game producer. Uh, you should definitely check out his stream. Going do, does variety stuff. Uh, we're currently going through, uh, going through all of the Kingdom Hearts again for nebulous reasons. Um, and if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Max. Uh, I'm known as Sharkfist in various places. I play the fiddle. Uh, I've been streaming for a bit over a month now, uh, and I've been really enjoying it. Um, yeah, maybe maybe hit that follow button if you like live fiddle music. I've been uh, taking it a bit taking it a bit easy today, focusing on uh, just sort of sitting around and chatting a bit more, so I don't wreck my hand. Um, which has led to the fact that we're actually four hours into this stream, which is quite surprising. To be fair, Mickey pulls off a trench coat better than you can? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, is I haven't actually fiddled for four hours, whereas what I usually do on uh, a lot of sort of lower viewer count streams especially is I just play straight fiddle for three hours, and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> whereas I actually feel pretty good today. Chrysler, thank you very much for that follow. Thank you. 
piece called uh, The Beacon Hill Jig, written by my old uh, fiddle teacher, Calvin Cairns. Yeah, doing some fiddles. All right, what's a piece I haven't played today? Uh, oh, I haven't done Star of the County Down and uh, and Mari's Wedding today. Those pieces are always fun. Uh, oh gosh I swear I know what these pieces are called uh, Sir of the County Down and Mari's Wedding yeah I think I'm going to run back a couple of my own compositions just because I enjoy them and also because some of them need some practice uh, so yeah let's let's play Eamon Soup again Eamon, Eamon was hanging out in chat earlier I don't know if he's still listening or not. Uh, I think he... I know he left, but I I think he left to go play video games with people. <laughs> soup? Hot soup? Pal friend... friend 
Pal friend Patine. Also, yes, thank you for that follow. Welcome. I hope I hope you all enjoy your time here, because I really enjoy playing fiddle for pieces for people. Boy, once we get past the three hour mark, uh, the mistakes definitely start setting in. But I don't know. I still don't. I'm slightly tired because I haven't eaten, but I don't feel like I'm doing damage to my body right now, which is my criteria for stopping. <laughs> Off, friend pal, pal friend patine anyways th thanks for stopping by yeah so that's Amon soup that is a song i wrote yesterday uh about my about the soup that my friend Amon makes uh and Amon Amon hangs out in chat sometimes and their their soups are very very good a random twitter link to soup yes good soup yeah, Eamon, Eamon's got a small uh, a small soup business. Makes soup for a bunch of people. He started it um, during the the early days of the pandemic when nobody was really able to get out very much uh, and was just selling soup to people in the building. Yeah, soup is very good. Ooh, actually, I want to play the, the Wounded Hussar again. That, that piece was fun. Um piece I started playing yesterday again when I was listening to fiddle records trying to trying to find good pieces to learn
And that is the Wounded Hussar, a.k.a. Captain O'Kane. Yeah, it's new to me, too. Uh, I learned it, learned it yesterday. But I really like it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Are there any, like, really good pieces I haven't done today that I should? Hmm. Oh, yeah, right. Of course. Well, actually, I'll do a, I'll do a more upbeat piece, and then I'll do... Um, boil them cabbage down. So let's do... Uh, whiskey before breakfast in the mason's apron. Whiskey Before Breakfast and The Mason's Apron. Um, I think I think the next piece is going to be my last piece. Because we're at the four and a half hour mark. Uh, and I am hungry. <laughs> I have not yet made dinner. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do... Uh, boil them cabbage down. And then I'll find y'all someone to raid. And can share... Keep, keep the raid trade going.
Angel, thank you so much for that raid. Uh, if you aren't following the only Angel X, you should follow the only Angel X. They're great. Nope. That's the wrong autocomplete. Nope. I can type. <laughs> there we go. Enjoying some Hades, it looks like. Yeah. Um, if you don't know who I am, uh, I'm Max. I play the fiddle. Uh, maybe hit that follow button if you if you want to hear more fiddle stuff. Uh, Lonely text. Thank you for that follow. How's it going, buddy? Uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, you caught me as I'm kind of wrapping up because it's late. I've been going for four and a half hours. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. I, every night, like fairly regularly, I come into somebody's stream and be like, how, how am I not following you? This makes no sense. Um, so I, I totally understand. Um, but yeah, I'm finishing up because it's been four and a half hours and I'm tired and hungry. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have I ever done a paraffin wax manicure? I don't know what that is. <laughs> For my fiddlers, I... Mm, mm. They coat your hands in melty wax. Oh, interesting. Weird. No, I've never done that. I haven't had any sort of manicure. Um, part of that is because I, I take reasonable care of my nails, but also I need to keep my nails short, um, and I need to be able to do that at a moment's notice. <laughs> um... There's definitely been times in this stream where I have just uh, been like, I have to stop this piece and gnaw on my nail for half a second because it's really bugging me. Um, not quite in a, like, a nail-biting way, but in a like, I need to make this shorter right now. Um, so yeah. Does sound good. But mostly I'm just happy that my, um, my tendon did give me like, because I, I spent the past couple of days off because this particular tendon was giving me trouble. Uh, but currently it is not giving me trouble, and it only gave me a few twinges of, through the stream, which is which is why I went this long. Um, but also, yeah, yeah, it's it's healed up. Most most of taking time off was precautionary, because I know that the injuries can turn over fairly quickly. Um, so I, I've just been uh, extra cautious rather than having actual injuries. Yeah, um, four FF skins seem to, gotten, seem to have gotten stronger. Yeah, a lot of that is actually just because I've been focusing a lot on uh, talking rather than fiddling. That has that that definitely means I can go a lot longer if I've got people to chat with and uh, and and yeah, and all that. Um, especially it's it can definitely be rough in some of the lower viewer uh, streams where. 
if if I don't have anybody to talk to, I just play play fiddle straight for three hours, and that's the sort of stream that uh, that can cause me to get into in self injury sort of territory. <laughs> so yeah, um, every every person that hangs out here is is doing me a service, really. <laughs> I thank you all for sharing your time with me uh, and allowing me to entertain you. So I'm going to find somebody to raid. Uh, let's see. Well, I know Wiggins isn't online. Is Molly back online? Is that is that a true thing, or is, or is this lying to me? This is lying to me. Okay. Um, this is outdated raiding information. Uh, let's see. Funko streaming? Uh, have I rated Funko yet? Oh, I haven't been able to rate Funko because I haven't been able to, um, able to go this late before. So let's, let's give Funko a raid. Um, because it's, it's very rare that I am, I am this late and I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity to raid, uh, El Funko very often. El Funko and the Funky Bunch down in Australia, where I grew up. Uh, make sure I spelled this right. Which I did. Straya. Yeah. Every now and then my accent will come out. Um, but yeah, if you got those, um, if you got those uh, applause emotes, definitely chuck them up. Uh, or maybe the artist dead one. I think I think uh, Funko would get a kick out of that one. But yeah, just go tell Funko he's good people, and I'll see you all uh, in the future. <laughs>